So we've got, uh, we bumped Paul about three times on our agenda yesterday, but Paul's going to talk to us. You all know Paul him, and he's going to talk to us about recall, and we can talk about it a little bit more at the end of the day when we're listing all the things that we're going to do to make our life better. But here, Paul, go ahead. Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, it's wonderful to be here. It has been very exciting, the information that we've received. I hope that we'll be able to uh, be effective in disseminating that and getting it out. There's a, a few key points that have been brought up that I kind of want to go over. I absolutely agree with Dr. Ball. Uh, it's way more than money. It's power. Uh, power is, is where the, the focus is and where people, they, they seek the power long before they go after the money. And I just want to go back, you know, when we talk about democracy and Churchill, uh, his statement that democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others is, is so true. And I say it's democracy 1.0, but the, the U.S. Constitution and what they put together there is, you know, that they understood about the rule of law. And that law, though, is, protect, is to protect the life, the liberty, and the property of the individual, and then, of course, to protect those who can't protect themselves. And I think we need to go back to that. But what I kind of want to talk about and what recall goes back to is power. And we've talked about all of these things and how do we control and lobby politicians on this, the subject of water, or what about the climate change, or what about taxation. And, and we talk about all these individual little things that we're struggling with, but to me, we're missing the big point. The big point in our own personal lives, in corporate life, everywhere else, is accountability. And where there's no accountability, there uh, is where corruption um, flourishes. And I wanted to start off my speech, but I went a little bit early here by, uh, I want to say all that, my, this is my version of Edmund Burke, but all good conservatives or individualists need to do is nothing in order for socialists or the collectivists to win. And as, as individualists, we're happy to go home and work and make a living, but, but realize collectivists, that their whole job is to work to take money from us. And so they work at it full time, and it's like interest from the banks. Uh, it doesn't ever rest, and these uh, collectivists and everyone else on the socialist side, they never rest, and they're always coming after us. And so what's the solution? How do we stop that? And again, it goes back to who has the power. And one of the most profound statements for me is, is that, that, that the power should always rest with who? The people. How can you do that in a so-called democracy? It's, you know, it's actually four years of tyranny, one, year, one day of democracy where we get to vote. But there is a solution. And it always amazes me how people, and, and even conservatives, how we put down this solution. And I don't like... Um, being a naysayer or anything, but I was very disappointed with Brian Jean when I went to him this year again. He says, your number one bill that you need to bring forward again is recall. They've done it twice. I did it once earlier, and they brought it forward. And he says, oh, no, Paul, they're getting tired of it. We can't keep bringing it forward. And when we fail to keep our priorities in the right order, we fail. It's just like failing to plan. It, it, it's always your priorities. And the number one priority is, where does the power reside? If we want to get democracy and control it, it has to reside in the people. There's only one way in order for it to reside in the people, and that's to have legislation on recall. That legislation needs to be specially crafted. Eberhardt had recall, but when he was gonna be recalled, he immediately went into the house and he withdrew the legislation. Ralph Klein, he had, we had to balance a budget. I sat in the house. When our, our good friend Ed Stelmack brought in legislation saying, well, we'll balance it on operating, but to borrow and build, we get to go into a deficit. Bottom line is, if you don't have legislation that's entrenched in such a way that the only way it can be repealed is through a referendum of the people, we lose it. And so this recall legislation needs to have about three important things. And again, one can, can debate it, but I, I feel the simplest way is first, it needs to be 50% plus one of the people who voted in the last election. So let's say there's 20,000 people in a riding, only 10,000 people voted, then that would mean 50% plus one, you'd need 5,001 of those people to sign a, sign a petition, a recall petition, to fire that elected representative. It's very simple and straightforward. And if after a few years we find that that's too low, but I think everybody, most people say, oh, that's way too high, Paul. We couldn't ever get that. But that's 50% plus one. The majority no longer want that individual 
who was elected. But if you have that legislation, I can tell you there'd be many more days I'd be motivated. And I go to lots of rallies and I participate in petitions and all of those things, but they're not very effective. But I would triple, quadruple, maybe tenfold the time that I would spend if I could go door to door to get signatures to fire an elected individual, whether it's the ag minister on their new legislation, whether it's the environment minister and wanting to shut down the Castle River to us down in the south, whether it's the energy minister or the, uh, you know, wanting to shut down our coal plants. But because there's no mechanism, human nature is, is if we don't see a positive outcome, we're really not willing to put a lot of effort into it. But when we can see the end results and it's positive, we get motivated. We'll start to work harder. And so if you want to actually turn things around and, and put the power back where, the, where it belongs with the people, all of these other things become secondary in my experience in government because you have a mechanism where you can actually stop them. It doesn't matter which area it's, it's happening in, whether it's the environment, whether it's in energy, whether it's uh, in healthcare, you can actually do something and fire the individual and it gets their attention. Um, I just feel that it's, it, it's in critical that we do that. Uh, one of the stories, I've got to look down here and make sure I'm not missing the... The hidden agenda. What always amazes me with conservatives is that they say, oh, Paul, you know, if we have recall, we couldn't do the tough things that we need to do when we get in power. But what we fail to see in our own, I want to say, stupidity or arrogance or f we're full of ourselves is that how difficult it is to tell somebody that this is good for you and so we're going to do it in your benefit versus the left that says we're going to promise you something that you don't have to work for. We're going to pay for it with somebody else's money. And so they get to implement their things. They motivate people because, oh, I'm going to vote for them because, oh, we're going to give the teachers $100 million or we're going to give uh, uh, you know, windmills to this group and whatever it is. And, and we keep fooling ourselves saying, oh, we don't really want recall because when we get in, like we're going to, um, we're going to have to implement tough things that people aren't going to like. That's not the purpose of democracy. If the people aren't ready to go there, then don't go there. What you do is you explain, you come forward. Gordon Campbell told the people, you know, the harmonized sales tax just isn't any good. We're not gonna go there. Then he gets back in, gosh, we're losing $300 million. Well, all we're gonna do then, we're gonna implement it. Well, that was his downfall. All he had to do, in my humble opinion, was say, you know, we got in, we re-looked at it, we're losing $300 million. We think we should change the HST. What do you think? And he could have just sent out a poll. Didn't have to do actually anything official, but a poll. And start to educate the people, and they could have had that. The recall is absolutely critical if we're going to be successful. Um, the other thing you have to say is, is to never give up. You know, Churchill in that, in that absolute battle against evil is, is never give up. And we need to have that attitude and, and to continue on. And, and the people in this, this room, uh, you're one of the very few that, that realize we need to keep plugging away at this. We can't give it up. But what I want to say the most of anything is that we need to have the power reside in the people. Let, let's not worry about this, art, this, this law, this piece of legislation, this tax. What we want, number one priority, let's create the parade that the people in power say, you know what, we need recall. Because even people on the left, we can tell them that, look, when they're getting in there with a hidden agenda, you know, well, actually they're gonna pass recall, they'll be accountable, we can stop them. I think that's an actual parade where we can get enough Albertans together that we can cause one of our leaders, whoever that might be in the future, to say that's gonna be my number one priority, we're gonna need recall. And I'm going to do the opposite because I'm a contrarian. I'm going to end in a joke. Um, I'm Danny's finance guy, supposedly. And in the Philippines, they have a word called Cory Put. Uh, what that means is it's tight-fisted. And I hang on to my money and, and be very careful on how it's spent. And so we're discussing things. And Danny says, well, I'm tired of talking to you, Paul. I'm going to go talk to the Lord. And so Danny comes back to me. And he says, well, I had a really interesting conversation. I asked the Lord, you know, what's a million dollars to you? And the Lord said, oh, it's like a penny to you. Wow. And he says, well, what's a thousand years to you like? Oh, it's like a second. And then Danny says, you know, she's just thinking on the money. It's only a penny. Well, Lord, could you give me, a, you know, a few of your pennies? And the Lord says, yeah, no problem in a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to take a few questions, yeah, then, then but just don't make it about uh, the money. Then introduce Holly. And then okay. Okay. Holly. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm sold on recall, but uh, what about term limits? 
if you have recall, why do you need it? I, I mean, that, that's just that, what, what you're saying there. And again, the reason why I don't like that, because there is the rare um, unicorn that shows up that's actually good. Why would you want to throw them out? And when they get there, they get elected. Uh, I, I just, I feel like recall is the ultimate legislation that you need to, to stop corruption. Cynical reply, has there ever been one? <laughs> no, actually, I, I want to name one. Like, uh, I don't mean, no, no, uh, I, 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 I agree with you, absolutely. And uh, Don Mazankowski got elected, and uh, to me, he was, he was as good an MP as he, the day he left as the day he got there. We actually met with him, the, the executive of our beef producers, the day they turned the soil for the Lloydminster upgrader, which is another story. But I was chairing the meeting, and, uh, and we did, our executive had flown in from Calgary, and Don was there with about five or six MPs, and I said, Don, thank you for taking the time to meet with us. And he said, no. He said, Danny, we get paid to be here. He said, thank you for taking the time for meeting with us. You know what I mean? He never forgot who he was serving. And to me, our friend Alan always says, rules are for fools and the guidance of the wise. And to me, like, uh, if you have recall, you know, if the fools are in charge, the wise can do something about it. But I don't think we should have hard and fast rules that would exclude the, the one in a million that we do get. We think there's a unicorn out there. <laughs> My one concern about recall is it would put us in a constant state of campaign so that whoever gets in their opposition is going to immediately be campaigning to get you know their, their 50 percent and then go back into another election. Here, by election, and then you only get 30 percent of the votes, then you have even a smaller ratio to, to meet your, your targets. Then it'll just be, you'll never get anything done. Uh, that's a great question. It's, and it's another one of those uh, reasons why many people say we shouldn't have it. But uh, first of all, I'll say is that, that they are always campaigning. If you don't think they're not campaigning and what's going on, uh, look at the literature that the government's putting out and everything else. And the other thing you have to realize, a lot of recall legislation that, that to me has failed, like in California, you're talking 5 or 10% of the electorate. And that, that isn't recall. That's why I say it's 50% plus one for me. That, that would be my starting number. And if, in fact, we found that it was a problem, we could go to the people because, to me, the only way to change the less legislation is through a referendum of the people it would be to say, you know what, we need 50% plus one of the total electorate. And so all of a sudden, because sometimes you have a low turnout and maybe only 30% of the people vote, and so, wow, then it really is only 15% of the people to get it. And so if, if there's a problem with it, you raise the bar, but don't eliminate it. And, and again, these are all what I want to say is, is a stinky armpit excuses on why we shouldn't do it. We, we need the power needs to reside in the people. If it resides anywhere else, it is going to be corrupted and used against us. And it's the only solution that I've ever seen for all of the different problems for every piece of legislation or anything that comes forward. Because otherwise, we are constantly in a battle uh, in one that we can't win. And so we give up and we capitulate on our energies because we realize that we're not going to be successful. Whereas recall, it goes out there. And the other thing, I think that we'd actually kind of learn that, wow, you know, there's always 5 or 10% and you just don't worry about it because people that are upset and they start going door to door and they can't get the signatures, it, it, it dwindles. And the other thing on my, my version of recall is the time limits. Uh, last couple of ones that have come out have been 60 days. I really think it should be 120 days. And so realize that if you only have 120 days to do it, um, after that, those names are all exhausted and you got to start over. And so yes, it can go in there, but again, that's where you're in tune with the people and we actually need to take the time to educate. And, and it's so critical, and I so agreed with Lauren that we, we take the wrong aspects so often thinking we talk economics when the facts are wrong on climate change. That's what we need to go after, not, oh, do you realize if we follow the Kyoto, we're going to lose our coal plants, we're going to do this, we're going to do that? No, it's that dragon in the cave, and we need to always focus on the points. But uh, it's, it's a fair question, but I don't think it's a good reason not could to. I add, could I just add a little bit to that, too? I, I don't, but did, How could I dare say no? Well, whatever, but don't exactly. <laughs> I've got one more story I'm saying. So as long as you're nice to me, I'm not going to tell it. But anyway, Doug, I think that's a good question. But the, the thing is, we're not going to have recall till we have a conservative government. So for the first four years, the people doing the work would be them anyway. You know what I mean? And as Bill pointed out, it's the unions and one thing and another. But it's quite an undertaking. But the beauty of all this is it's all done by volunteers. I mean,
mean, I mean, at some point in time, like right now, on the federal level and the provincial level, there's lots of us who are like Paul who would gladly go and do the work if, we, if, we, if there was some mechanism that we could use. So somebody has to create the mechanism and we can't hope that they will create it. And then, like you say, once we get, once, once we get a conservative government, they bring in recall, we'll be in government for four years or maybe eight years and then uh, go from there. But like, somebody has to, has to take the initiative, don't they? And Paul has made me a born again believer in not only pinching my money, but in being a re you know, recall. So.